on Epic Pants, I'm gonna be giving away all kinds of stuff because I'm moving and I can't take all of this with me. So check out the end of the video where I explain how this works and how you can get your hands on some of this stuff that I am just giving away with purchases on epicpants.com. So that'll be at the end of the video. Now let's uh, get you a Windows key and then we're gonna talk about why you probably don't need a 4K monitor. Look at that ugly activate windows thing. Is this what your Windows 10 looks like? When you try to go and change your color scheme or your background, does it say, oh, sorry, you gotta activate. We need this dark theme. You can go buy a retail CD key if you want to. It's gonna cost you over $100 typically, maybe a lot, maybe 150. Uh, and if you're buying office, it's gonna be a lot more than that. Or you can do like I do and grab an OEM CD key. It's the exact same product when you buy an OEM key. It's just, this is the price that the big corporations and stuff pay when they buy them and put them on laptops or whatever, when they buy them for their offices. So everyone should get the same price. And that's why I always buy OEM keys. And I do it on whokeys.com. We have Windows 11. Then you can also get Office. Pick the version you want. I'm gonna get Windows 10 Pro. So go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code. Hit it apply, and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for 14.85. Once you're finished, if you wanna access your key, you click on your name on the top right, click on User Center, and you'll see my purchase orders. Right here, you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on View Keys and Codes. Then you will see your code right here. Just go ahead and copy this code, press Start, type Activate and you'll see activation settings come up. Click on that, then click change product key. Right there, you can paste in your code and hit next, and then you will be activated. It's very simple. And while you're on WhoKeys, be sure to check out some of their new stuff like their wireless mice and mechanical keyboards. All right, now to the regularly scheduled video. Nobody really needs a 4K monitor unless we're talking like a huge monitor, but when it comes to small monitors, I mean, you're probably just wasting your money. I, I can't think of any reason why anybody would want a 4K monitor. Would you, Muppet? It's all about the PPD. Oh, well, I guess that's the voice of reason. Yes, the voice of all the reasons you should listen to me. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> all right, so let's listen to Lauren for just a minute. I've been using a 4K TV and monitor for eight years now, so for me, 4K is just the norm. And anything below that immediately stands out as lacking in clarity. A couple of years back, I tried a 32 inch 1440p display and that looked, I'm gonna say blurry. I can't think of a better word for the opposite of crisp. Well, well hold on now. You're probably sitting too close to your- Shush oh, you. Okay, 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 fine. Let okay. me finish. I was really on the fence when it came to buying a Steam Deck because it only has an 800p display and I didn't want to have a low res and therefore bad experience. However, when it arrived, I found that the resolution wasn't bad at all. It doesn't look high res, but it certainly didn't seem blurry, like the previous lower res displays I've tried in recent years. This took me down a rabbit hole of trying to find a way of quantifying and comparing perceived resolution. PPI, or pixels per inch, doesn't do a good job, because at just 7 inches, the PPI of the Steam Deck is 216, which is really high, whereas my 65 inch 4K TV, which looks way higher res than the deck, only has a PPI of 68. The issue with PPI is that it doesn't take into account view distance, and distance is vitally important when it comes to perceived resolution. So I discovered PPD, which is pixels per degree of the human eye. There's calculators where you can put in your screen size, resolution, and view distance, and you're given a PPD number. With the Steam Deck, for me, that's 61 PPD, which looks okay to me. For my 28-inch 4K monitor, that's 67, which looks good. And for my 65-inch 4K TV, that's 113, which also looks good. So for me, personally, and this is obviously subjective because we all have different eyesight and different preferences, I think the cutoff point is about 60 PPD. Below that, and I probably won't like it. So if I did what everyone suggested and went with a 1440p monitor instead of a 4K one, and kept to the same screen size and view distance, I'd be at just 45 ppd and I'd hate that. I'd probably get used to it over time, but getting used to something bad doesn't stop it from being bad. That's, uh, come on, hold on, blur, blur, that's not fair. No boss. Okay, okay, fine. Now, you could just sit further away from your display to increase its ppd, but I don't think that's good advice if the reason you're sitting further away is because the screen lacks clarity when you're closer to it. I think it's best to pick where and how you'd sit in a best case scenario and then work out what resolution is required to look crisp at that distance. 
Of course, none of what I've said is taken into account the types of games you play or your budget, which are both huge factors, but I've rambled on for long enough as it is. It's back to the studio. <laughs> All right, everyone, that was, that was Lauren um, from Tasty PC, of course. So uh, we're going to talk about what she just said because it broadened my horizon. And I'll put all of her information in the, the description. We can science this. There's something we can do to figure out what pixel density you need. Now, if you're thinking about getting a small monitor, the pixels are going to be so close together that you may not be able to see it. But if you're sitting really close, you might actually be able to see it. Me, I sit pretty far back from my monitor. So a 4K screen, if it's 27 or even 32 inches, it's hard for me to tell the difference between that and a 1440p display because I like to like kind of just lean back and chill. I don't like to be right up on my monitor. Now, for the future reference of this video, my vision is 2015 or better. I've had smile laser eye surgery, which is like the upgraded version of LASIK. Uh, my last test, I read everything on the 2015 line, except there was a Q that I thought was a zero. So I'm better than 2015, but not quite 2010. I have good vision, so I can sit back a little bit. Um, and I do see everything with amazing clarity. My vision is augmented. Now there's something we can do, and that is get one of these. If you don't have one of these, you can use a, a tape measure or a, a ruler or a yardstick, but this is the safest. If you gouge your eye out with a tape measure, but those things flopping around, I will not be held responsible. So this is what we're gonna do. We've got inches or centimeters. I'm gonna use centimeters because it gives us uh, more levels of radiation. I don't wanna be doing half inches and stuff like that. So where I comfortably sit from my desk, you wanna like just put it like beside your head here. Like I said, be very careful with pokey things. And then stretch this out if you can reach it. If you're not, get someone to help you. If you don't have any friends, uh, get a, a, a stick, something like that, and see how far away it is from your screen. Where do you like to sit? And I sit pretty far back. I sit at about 89, uh, 90 centimeters. And when I'm playing games, sometimes I lean forward. But most of the time these days, I kind of like chill in my chair. So I'm like at 110 or 120 back from my screen. That's, that's a very, very far distance away from the screen, but that means I can take advantage of this and use a different monitor. So let's say you've got a 1080p monitor. What we need to do to figure out what pixel density you need is a little exercise here. So we're gonna pretend you have a 1080p screen right now that's 27 inches, right? And you're sitting 60 centimeters away. That's like, you know, normal sitting at your desk. Now I want you to put something on the screen like, uh, a video game or something like that, or just something with a lot of pixels, uh, maybe an image or something. And you do it with a few different things, like your favorite examples, and then lean back in your chair until you think, oh, this looks perfect. And you're like, scoot back if you have to, until you think, okay, I cannot see the pixels anymore. Now, if your screen is really big, like 27 inches, you're gonna have to get back pretty far. For me, it was about 110. Now at 110 centimeters, I was like, okay, the pixels are not as pronounced and it's comfortable. I could still see the pixels. I probably have to go to like 120 or even 130 centimeters away so that I don't see the pixels on a, you know, a big 1080p screen. But I don't care about that as much as you. It's all up to you. This is subjective. I kind of like a few pixels here and there. It makes me feel at home. I've got Stockholm sy syndrome for pixels, actually for dots because I came from the CRT days. But anyway, so let's say that you get about 130 centimeters away and you're like, this looks good on my 27 inch 1080p screen. If it's a 24 inch, whatever, put that in there, 24 inch screen. And it'll be 83. Well, you know, maybe maybe at one, 110 was where it looked good on your 24 inch 1080p screen. Find this and, you know, measure it. Now we know that the number we're looking for, the number you're comfortable with, is either 71 or 80 or whatever number you like, whatever looks good to you. So then we can determine, do we need a 4K monitor? Do we need something like that? So we can come over here and say, okay, I wanna get a 32 inch screen, which is gonna be bigger for your desktop. So let's go over here and click on, we want 4K UHD, and we're gonna be sitting 70 away. So yeah, we do need 4K if we're gonna be sitting that close, but for me, I'm gonna be sitting back here. That's, that's a lot, I don't need that many pixels. So I can come down and click on QHD, which is 1440p. There we go, 60. And if I'm 90, 60 is like, for 32 inches, that is like my lowest number. So as long as I'm sitting at my normal distance, I can see the pixels at 1440p, but I don't care. 60 is my threshold, I've decided. If I pull back a little bit to like 100, 
maybe 110 when I'm like chilling in my chair. Everything's beautiful and smooth. So I'm okay with a 1440p 32 inch screen. For most people, I think it's going to be about here. 27 inches, 1440p sitting 80 to 90 centimeters away. And this is gonna look good for most people. If you're someone who cannot stand any jagged edges and you don't wanna use anti-aliasing, you may have to move up to 4K. Now let's talk about all the other things and all the other reasons why you may or may not want to pick up a 4K monitor. The next thing for me is with small 4K monitors, you are defeating the purpose when it comes to desktop real estate. Let me explain what I'm talking about right here. I can't see it. So I have to go in and turn up the scaling options in Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you'd have to go and change that. It's better on Mac than it is on Windows, but Windows is getting better, uh, but a lot of it's dependent upon the programs. Most programs have to either use the default Windows theming system, or if they use their own theme, theming, theming system, like the Premiere and all the Photoshop stuff or whatever Adobe stuff, a lot of them have to use their own internal scaling options and they have to work behind the scenes with Windows. They work okay. I don't love the way they work, they work okay. But with a 32 inch 4K screen, I had to turn my scaling up to 150. Now 150 scaling means that all my menus, all my options, all my different sizes and stuff were exactly like a 32 inch 1440p panel. I was gaining no desktop real estate over the 1440p panel. Now if I leaned in and looked at different things, the pixels weren't as apparent and everything did have a little bit more clarity. But for me, I didn't really care about that. That's something you maybe you care about, but the only real difference you're gonna have between 1440p and um, you know 4K if you're running you know 4K with scaling, which you really have to do on smaller monitors, especially once you get down to 27, 24, you're gonna need like 200% scaling. So the only benefit you're gonna have is clarity when you're really pixel peeping, like leaning in and looking at things. For me, I, even when I'm editing my f uh, photos, and I'm not sure if a lot of you know, I am a world published photographer. I did that before I did all the video stuff. I used to do a lot of photography and I still take a lot of photos. Uh, when I'm editing my photos, I generally sit back and I can zoom in on my 1440p monitor. And as long as I'm back here, I can just zoom in and I can still see the details. I can see if there's dirt marks or scratches on the lens or fuzz, or I can see the details just fine. I have no complaints. It's maybe a little bit sharper on a 4K, but for me, I, it's such a minor difference that it doesn't justify the extra cost. So you have to use scaling. If you need extra desktop real estate, the only real way to do it is to get a 40 inch 4K monitor. That way you can run at 100%. You don't have to use any scaling. You don't have to do 150%. You can run everything at 100%. And since you have a bigger display, the pixels are gonna be a little bigger, but you'll be able to see everything on your screen without having to turn on any kind of like, you know, scaling options and you'll be able to fit more on your screen at one time and it'll be comfortable you'll have to push it back a little bit i usually recommend being at least 100 you know centimeters away from a 4k 40 inch screen i used a 40 inch 4k screen for a long time and it was the best for productivity because you really did have more stuff you could see more of your menu bars you could see more photos on the screen you could see more text it's just if you want to see more it's much easier if you go big the downside to going big, for me, was that gaming was not as good because sitting at a desk with a huge screen like that, I was too close to the action. It was difficult to see what was going on and I was moving my head around way too much. For strategy games and stuff like that, no big deal. But when it comes to first person shooters, twitch based action games, it was difficult to see what was going on and I found it hard to aim. So I would have to like sit back like this and then eventually I just started playing all my games in a 1440p window in the middle of the screen like this. And so I was like, it just defeats the purpose because now it's basically like a 27 inch 1440p screen right in the middle of my 4K screen. Why do I, you know, I love playing games and stuff like that. That's my, that's my main thing. I love playing games. So it was kind of like, I don't like playing games on this unless I maybe push the monitor back. So that's what you have to think about. 4K in my opinion at 40 inches is probably too big for gaming on your desktop. Good for, great for a couch, great for sitting back, not good for right up close. The other thing to think about when you move to a, 
uh, 4K display, it requires a lot more GPU horsepower to push the pixels to that display. So in games, you're going to see anywhere from sometimes 10, but sometimes up to 30 or 40% drop in FPS. Go online and look at your favorite games, type 1440p versus 1080p versus 4K, and just see the differences uh, as you scale up. Now, the nice thing about 4K, you can get away with turning off filters because it is sharper, so you're not gonna need anti-aliasing. You're not gonna see jagged edges as much. To be fair, on my 1440p display, sitting back like I do, I don't have to use a lot of filters either, so there's a benefit there. But do think about that. You can turn off some filters, so it's not gonna be that big of a hit, but it still is gonna be a hit to your frame rate. And if you're getting one of these displays, it's like 144 hertz or 165 hertz, well, at 4K, you may not be able to get more than 100 to 120 FPS in some games if you're running RTX and all that kind of stuff, then maybe only 80 FPS. You're not gonna be taking advantage, you know, those extra refresh cycles with your monitor. So that's something else to consider. One of the other reasons why I like 1440p better. When it comes to like the high refresh rate monitors, I can play my old games, play my new games at 150 FPS, sitting back in my chair comfortably with really smooth action on my 165 hertz panel. If you run multiple monitors, be prepared to replace all of your monitors with 4K. Once you go 4K with one, you're gonna to need to go 4K with all of them, or you're gonna to wanna to run the same scaling on all your different monitors. I've got a 4K monitor in the middle, and then the monitor on the side is 1440p, and then on the left is a weird 1920 by 1200, 16 by 10 panel. Monitor on the left and the monitor on the right, they don't need any scaling. If you turn on the scaling, everything gets way too big. So I have the scaling off on those, but in the middle, I have the 4K monitor set to 150%. Watch, as I move between the two, see how I like, see the resizing as it goes across? Now that's not, see it's a little bit of a weird jump and there's a stutter on the edge. It's it's changing from 150% scaling to 100% scaling as you're moving back and forth. It gets kind of annoying, especially if you're someone like me who's always snapping things to other monitors and being like, oh, I wanna watch this over here. Let's throw this over here while I'm working on something on this screen. It's like, watch it, oh, it's painful, oh God. So that is extremely annoying to me. That's, like, that's a deal breaker. So right now my options are to buy three 4K monitors so that I can keep everything at 150% scaling or buy other monitors that I can also set to 150% so I can, you know, like move back and forth. If you're running multiple monitors and they're not the same resolution, this is going to annoy you, I promise. So while I did like the clarity of the 4K, I would have to spend another like 1200 bucks getting side monitors that match so that I would have a nice smooth transition from monitor to monitor. If that's not a big deal to you, if you don't mind the stutter or whatever from dragging things from monitor to monitor, then whatever. You and I are different. That drives me, it drives me nuts. Like I, every time I do it, it's like, Ugh! I just hit a speed bump and someone slapped me in the head with a hockey puck and, and I slipped and fell on the ice and my teeth fell out. Every single time, That's it's that dramatic for me. I wake up in the middle of the night gasping for breath thinking oh no i've just moved a, a window from monitor to monitor now not everybody ha you know has the luxury of having multiple monitors i got a lot of these for free some of them i bought but i like having multiple monitors for productivity so consider that as well you will be much better off if all your monitors have the same scaling factor and i'm totally happy having two 1440p monitors or one ultra wide monitor in the middle a 1440p on the side and then maybe even a 1080p on the side. As long as they're all using the same scaling, you can move things around in Windows without any stuttering or weirdness or flickering or any nonsense like that. That's a big deal for me. And that is why I decided to take the 4K monitor back. We also need to be honest about what games are gonna be playing on this because, you know, a lot of us just think, oh, 4K gaming. Are you going to be playing the AAA games that take advantage of all that stuff? Are you going to be playing the games that have the ultimate fidelity and all that? Or are you going to be like me? I got my 4K monitor, got all excited, plugged it in, and then booted up Vampire Survivor. And I was like, what am I doing? I'm playing a pixely, ridiculously simple game. Let's close this out and try Morrowind instead. 
So I played Morrowind, and to be fair, my Morrowind is so modded that it drops to like 40 FPS at 4K in some of the cities and stuff. So the modded Morrowind looks really pretty, as you can see on the screen right here. And you're looking at it at 1440p. But the thing is, you know, with the lower, I guess the lower polygon counts and stuff like that, and, and like the older games, for me, it doesn't make a difference between 1440p and 4K. Whereas at 1080p, I can actually see the pixels on the monitor if it's a large monitor. So that's something that no matter what game I'm playing, even if I'm playing an emulator, which I frequently do, like an old Super Nintendo game, or a, you know, I'm playing Final Burn Neo, some arcade games or something, I can really see the pixels. And that kind of is, is weird because that's not how CRTs worked. You know, you saw the dots, you saw the scan lines, but you didn't see a grid of pixels. So, you know, think about that when it comes to the size. There's a certain point where it doesn't matter anymore, but we really need to talk about what games you're gonna be playing because with certain games, it doesn't matter as much. If you want the ability to play all the games, then just get back to this, measure, and see what's tolerable. So the 4K monitor that I bought, I'll show you that one because it is a beautiful VA monitor. Uh, maybe not as, as fast as an IPS panel, but better blacks. And I do like a curved panel, but that's going to be subjective up to you. I like it. Just feels comfortable to me for playing games, especially when you get to the 32 inch size. 27 inches flat is what I like. Um, so yeah, I was using this Gigabyte and it was great. The HDR actually looks pretty good on this one as well. And now what I'll have, I have a 32 inch 1440p 165 hertz biotech monitor that I'm using as my primary right now. And it it's it's fine. It's totally fine works great looks almost as good as the gigabyte like like i said nine out of ten almost as good as the gigabyte i think a, i think a really nice compromise with all of this is an ultra wide um, like a 3440 by 1440. not as difficult as a full 4k panel when it comes to running your games it gives you a little bit more width so you see a little bit more and it's a little bit more immersive in your games. They look really good and there's a lot of good ones on the market and you can get them for around the same, well, you can get them for cheaper than the price of a 4K monitor. Check this out, like you can get this, it's a couple hundred dollars less than the cost of the 4K monitor. And I think it's a more immersive experience and I like the pixel density. It's not quite the same pixel density as the 4K, but it's a little bit better than the 32 inch 1440p monitor. So I think this is an option. If your primary function is gaming, consider some of the, what is this guy doing? What, what, it, how, what does this have to do about gaming? Wow, this guy is just a, look at him. He's like the parkour frog of the gaming monitor world. And then if you have a little bit more money, Alienware and also LG make a, a monitor with the same panel. I usually like the Dell Alienwares if I have a choice between the two. Uh, this price is not right, but you know, if you, if you see this somewhere and it's under a grand and you have a ton of money burning a hole in your pocket, this is an interesting option as well because it's a little bit bigger and it's going to be better for productivity and the fact that it is 1600 tall instead of 1440 tall. So this is something else I am considering, but it's, it's out of my price range at the moment. And this is for gamers who like ultra wide gaming, but want a little bit of extra room on the top and bottom. Those couple hundred extra pixels are going to be really nice for productivity. In my opinion, I think it'll be a pretty good compromise between the two. So that's been my like kind of rambly thing. I think the most important part of this entire video is you need to figure out what pixels per degree of where you're sitting. I want to say thanks to Lauren for, for showing up and really talking some sense into me because that's, that's what started a lot of this is like I was going on like nobody needs this. And then she shows up and she's like, you need some sense talked into you. And I was like, don't be the voice of reason. I hate the voice of reason. I just want to, I just want to do bad things. So it was, it was nice to have a different perspective. I need that a lot of times because I, you know, I just like, I started thinking, well, this is how I do it. This is just not how everyone does it. People actually lean into their screen. I thought everyone leaned back. You know, I, I start to think about things and I don't realize that, well, I mean, I do, but at the same time, I'm like, why would anybody do it differently? So it's nice to have someone else come in and shift your perspective and broaden your ideas and give you some stuff like this. Like this tool and this thing right here so you can measure, I think is gonna be really handy. Use it every time you buy a monitor. It'll be, it'll be so, such worthwhile knowledge to know, hey, the pixels per degree of vision that I prefer are at least 60 or 70, you know what I mean? So learn that about yourself 
and then apply that knowledge to your future purchases. And then you can start to know exactly what pixel density you need for where you're gonna be, where you're gonna put your monitor and where you're gonna sit. I hope this has helped you. And if you were thinking about getting a 4K and now you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with a 1440p because it's gonna be the same desktop real estate once I up my scaling. And if I sit back in my chair, it'll look just fine and I can play my game super fast. If you're gonna do that like me, let me know in the comments. If you are like, you know what, I need every single pixel for clarity for whatever reason it is, let me know in the comments. I'm curious if you're someone who leans in and, and really cares about everything and you don't want any of the, the, I guess, rough edges. I'm curious, let me know. All right, I'll see you in the comments. Oh, wait, wait a second. I've got to tell you about what's going on on epicpants.com. So yeah, moving very soon. I don't know why I'm doing all these videos while I'm moving. It's, it's stressful. Since I'm moving, there's a lot of things that I'm getting rid of, but they're just too big and heavy to ship without me incurring way too much of an expense. I don't want to spend thousands of dollars shipping everything out, but I've got an eye, but I had an idea of a way to give away a lot of this stuff by letting you just help me out with the shipping a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. Over on epicpants.com, I have a new item where you can choose large, medium, or small item. The descriptions are all down here telling you what a small, medium, or large item is. And then you can help pay some of the shipping to get that item to you. Now the idea here is that you'll come over and take advantage of our sale right now that's going on uh, where all of the hardware, because I'm moving, is 60% off if you use the coupon code MOVING. So come over here, grab some hardware, grab a mouse, grab some, grab a mouse pad, grab some, some gear. Also all the drinkware right now uh, is also on sale for 60% off with that same code MOVING. So as long as it's the drinkware that I have here in the house, you know, not stuff that's print on demand, but you know, you can get all that stuff for 60% off. And then if you want, you know, to grab something bigger, I'm going to be throwing stuff in there. If it's small, like DVDs and books and stuff, I'll throw that in there for free. Just whatever I've got that's extra, just as a little bit of a fun thing, I'll throw that in there for free. But for all of this stuff, the bigger stuff that I am going to be giving away, uh, you know, I, I don't want to throw this away, but I can't take it with me. So just choose what you want here add this to your cart, and then I'll see that and be like, okay, you paid an extra 15 bucks or whatever for shipping. I'll throw something fun into your cart, something bigger into your cart. So best of luck. It's kind of kind of loot boxy and all that, but everything here is cool. It's mostly older gear and stuff like that. So have fun. Grab some of that over on epicpants.com and I'll see you online.